which actually is a good sign, because it means we got a lot done. Our legislators got a ton of work done. And so let's thank them for everything they did. It was a Herculean effort. So folks, we are going to do this lightning round. So I'm going to ask uh, if there's a, a, a question specifically for a member. Uh, and we'll just take a, an answer from the member unless someone else up here just is burning to add. Um, so this is a question about the airport. Uh, residents of the south side are concerned that with airport expansion, this will be more noise for the residents. Uh, it, it is likely that the greatest benefits will be north side. Uh, please explain why you want to increase the airport. So I'll answer that one real quick. So, um, we're going to continue to have, so first of all, the Santa Fe Airport is one of the best regional economic development projects that is happening in northern New Mexico. Uh, it allows tourists uh, and business to come in and out of Santa Fe, and it's growing and expanding, and it is seeing benefits for small business uh, all over the north when you have people come to visit uh, our city. Uh, tourism in terms of dollars uh, in the economy, payroll, is about the same as oil and gas. And so this is one of the ways that we're diversifying our economy away from oil and gas is by encouraging our cultural economy and tourism. Uh, the plan here is to add an additional gate at the airport. Um, we will still, we still don't have the size limits on the airplanes. So I've been very certain that we're not going to have 737s flying in. <laughs> they will continue to be the regional jets. Um, this may allow us to add flights to, uh, I would love to see Chicago and Houston and LA. Um, uh, why not Chicago and Houston? LA. LA. Chicago and Houston too. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're gonna, uh, I think it's gonna continue to work. So the noise issues, we understand. Uh, I, I don't think they're gonna be that much increased. We're, we might talk about an extra flight or two a day, realistically, at least in the short term. Uh, but it's not, the, the benefits are certainly not concentrated in one part of uh, the city. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'll, this is a, an important one from the city of Santa Fe perspective, uh, which I can relate to being married to a city councilor who gets lots of calls about potholes, as does the mayor. Uh, city of Santa Fe is investing in repaving its badly deteriorated streets, but two of the worst state, two of the worst are state roads. Uh, Pasadena Peralta between Old House Highway and St. Francis and St. Michael's. What can our Santa Fe delegation do to get these roads in deplorable condition repaved? Uh, great question. It is, they are state roads and it is incredibly frustrating to drive down these roads, uh, which are, are deplorable. And I think one of the things that we need to do is we need to figure out how to get these roads, and the mayor and I talked about this, transferred from the state to the city. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense to have these being state roads, and I think there were some discussions with the prior administration that didn't really get there, the cost of the maintenance. St. Michael's, I think, needs to be redone completely. Uh, so one of the things in terms of how are we gonna get this done, we have an incredible new Department of Transportation Secretary, Michael Sandoval, and I'll just give one little plug, Every single cabinet secretary uh, that Governor Lujan Grisham put through for confirmation passed the Senate, Senate unanimously. These were amazing people. I've worked with Michael. We've a lot of us have worked with Michael. Uh, I think, you know, being able to sit down with him across the table and have a discussion about how we can make this happen is something that a legislative delegation needs to do with a city delegation and make this happen. So, Mayor, you got, got the answer? News flash. Yeah, good. Uh, he does. So, Senator Wirth is absolutely right. We have a completely different uh, administration. Two weeks ago, we met with the Secretary of Transportation. Uh, this summer, uh, we'll begin paving St. Mike's. Uh, we're going to uh, pave uh, Paseo Peralta. We've got a transfer process already underway. It makes all the difference in the world when there's an administration that wants to work with the city as opposed to be obstructionist. So the answer is, in addition to potholes, uh, repaving on those state roads 
will happen and the transfer will happen. Some numbers. We appropriated approximately $350 million for roads this year, state roads, and that would include the roads and ones as we talked about. But um, we also um, broke that down for specific maintenance of some roads and building, um, improving them in some way, widening them, whatever needed to be done. We also appropriated the um, local, um, uh, it's called LIDA, it, the Local uh, Development Act. Uh, funding for infrastructure also, so that could also include roads and so on. But that's just a little added to that. I have a question from somebody here, so let me, they gave me this one. It says, we think the legislation with leadership um, from Senator Rodriguez and the Speaker, among others, for ensuring the food tax was not reinstated. Um, okay. Can we be confident this bad idea will not slip into law in 2020? Well, let me tell you what, I will work hard again, uh, along with others of my colleagues here, to ensure that, do everything I can to ensure that this, the food tax is not reinstated. Uh, you know, many times we forget that while you know, we can go to the store and buy something, buy a box of milk and not even think twice about it. There are some people I've actually seen uh, that have to make a decision at the counter, at the cash register, whether they should buy milk or something else and they have to put something else back for five cents that they don't have, maybe that's a tax. Those are the things we need to consider as we're doing this. Secondly, I hadn't thought about this until one time before the session when I went to visit the home, um, not the home people, the food depot. I went to visit there and two other facilities, and the lady, the uh, manager there says, please don't do everything you can, don't impose the food tax. She says, then we have to pay tax also when we go to the store for groceries to add to food for people. And I thought, wow, you know, we tend to just think individuals as grocery shopping food tax, but this is for all organizations also and nonprofits that we would be at. Taxing, so um, that is not who we are. Food is something that we should never, we should just not tax. We should do everything we can to ensure that we don't have hunger here in New Mexico. One out of four children in New Mexico goes hungry. That is unacceptable, and it's up to us to continue to work towards changing that. So I will continue to work hard towards that. And I'm sure we all will. Also, I know that he worked very hard in the very beginning, from early on, in our majority leader saying this is not, it's not going to be on the agenda, so we need to keep it off. Okay, so this question is uh, essentially says a lot of good bills passed, a lot of good bills didn't, uh, and in particular, energy bills, community solar, local choice energy, uh, electric utility procurement. Uh, what are we going to do to make sure those become law? Uh, I think, you know, the, to me the legislature is an eternally frustrating place. A lot of good bills don't pass. Uh, I actually had a conversation yesterday with one of the conservation organizations. We talked about several of these bills. And we talked about maybe, you know, put, putting these into a sort of omnibus kind of package, you know, an energy package, <coughs> working on it over the interim. Pro, you know, getting the governor's office on board and trying to run that in, even in the short session. So these bills are not forgotten. Uh, we did a lot of work on them during the session. You know, we will keep working on them. Thank you. And while she's reading the question, especially with community solar, it's a great idea, and uh, I really want to see it happen. So. Uh, the chairman, chairman McQueen's idea of putting it to an omnibus and getting it through is, I think, a good idea. I, I do definitely want to see that happen. Thank you. Okay, so this one is about um, ensuring that uh, even though that we've raised the minimum wage, then there is, um, of course, the possibility that there'll be continued wage theft and that maybe there'll be even more wage theft. There was money approved in the budget um, to hire new investigators for Department of Workforce Solutions. Um, it, the question is, 
um, for workforce solutions to implement the um, the programs, how to, how, to, how to make sure that workers get their stolen wages. I, um, I mean, just giving them the resources, it was exciting to see that there was a job fair just for the Department of Health. I really believe that this governor, um, I've been on the phone fairly regularly with the new Secretary of Workforce Solutions, and he's really excited about moving forward on making workforce solutions a better, a, a more functioning agency. So I, I think that's that's the answer, is that we've given the money for the resources. If we need to give more resources, then we will. Yes. I think maybe one more question, since we're kind of at time. Yeah, thank you. I have a question here. Why doesn't New Mexico legislature have oversight committees? Uh, we do. We have the legislative uh, council, the uh, LFC, which is made out of, uh, of both parties and also Senate and House, and we listen and hear budgets and we hear complaints and uh, we listen to testimony. We try to correct as much as we can. Uh, it, it, sometimes it's difficult because without the input from the public, it's hard to come up with uh, what needs to be worked on. <laughs> And it's a very busy committee. I, I'm a member of that committee, and uh, and we're always taking those kind of issues. Do you want to do one more? Sure. Are, you, are you doing on one more? Okay. A quickie. Light. Okay. Oh, quickie. Light. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can just one. It, it's Representative Trujillo, but it says, "Why did you vote against the methane capture rule in the House? There wasn't one." <laughs> so I think, I think, I think there, was, there, there was no methane bill. Uh, there was no methane bill in the House this year. So I think whoever whoever heard that about Representative Trio got misinformed. We did not uh, methane recapture. It, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's the, the, the governor's administration asked the legislature to be at the beginning of the session to lead methane capture. Uh, to her regulatory body. So the Oil Conservation Commission is taking up methane uh, rules as we speak. They started the rulemaking process. They started going all over the state with the flare cameras, looking at uh, methane emissions and how to address it. But uh, there was a request that that be attempted first uh, through rule. And so we said, sure, give it a shot, and then we'll take a look at the rules. But I am very confident uh, the Governor Lujan Grisham and her team are going to get a solid uh, rule that Colorado and their Regulation 7 will be uh, envious of. So, uh, thanks everybody.